Hello, I'm Julia Walters with Kingman Regional Medical Center, and you're watching our COVID-19 update series. COVID cases are on the rise in many parts of the U.S., including in Mojave County. Kingman Regional Medical Center is currently treating 23 COVID-positive patients in-house. To help, we recently announced a very special partnership. With support from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, we've opened a temporary monoclonal antibody infusion center for high-risk COVID patients in Mojave County. This enables KRMC to treat more patients with monoclonal antibodies, a therapy used to fight COVID-19 infection early. Joining me today to talk about the Infusion Center and what this means for our community is Dr. Michael Anderson, Senior Advisor at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Office of the Assistant Secretary for Preparedness and Response in Washington, D.C. For almost a year now, Dr. Anderson has worked to educate providers and patients about monoclonal antibody therapeutics. Thank you, Dr. Anderson, for joining me today. Thank you, Julie. It's a pleasure to be with you today. This is a really unique partnership between KRMC, the state, the county, and as you mentioned, Health and Human Services to bring life-saving therapies to this area called monoclonal antibodies. We brought a team of 15 healthcare providers from across the nation. We have doctors and nurses from Utah, from the East Coast, and from the Midwest. So we're really honored to be here in the community and talk about and infuse these life-saving therapies. Yes, we're very honored to have your team here and we appreciate it in our community. Let's begin by talking about what monoclonal antibodies are and how they can benefit our community. Sure. Antibodies are a protein who have one job in life. That job is to kill viruses. So when you get vaccinated, you actually produce your own antibodies against the virus. So for the rest of your lifetime, you're immune to that virus. These monoclonal antibodies are given to the patient really to buy some time. These are for a very specific subset of folks. These patients have turned positive for COVID. They have certain risk factors to develop more severe symptoms, and they're within the first 10 days of therapies. So these monoclonal antibodies are just like the antibodies your body would produce if you're immune, and they're meant to buy some time to decrease symptoms and to hopefully prevent that patient from progressing to get sicker. So this therapy generally helps to reduce severe illness or prevent severe illness and hospitalization. Is that right? The data is really amazing, and we're accumulating more data every month. These monoclonal antibodies have been shown to decrease the need for hospitalization by upwards to, of 70 to 75 percent. Wow. That's good for the patient because they feel better and they don't progress. That's good for the family because their loved one is back and getting healthier. And quite frankly, it's good for the healthcare system. That means less patients need to be admitted to ICU or, God forbid, less patients die. So I, these are really important therapies. Of course. So both this therapy and the vaccine involve antibody reactions. Um, can you tell us are they the same? What, what's the distinction between this and the vaccine? Yeah, they're similar. Monoclonals are really uh, an, an external source of antibodies for you to fight the infection. The vaccine is your body producing it on its own. There's a really important timeline, however, that if a patient turns positive for COVID, they've got to get these antibodies into them quickly. A vaccine takes weeks for your own body to rev up the immune system to produce your own antibodies. So this, once again, is a bridge, a bridge to make sure the patients are feeling better, that we attack the virus with these monoclonals, and then they can get the vaccine later on. So we discussed a little bit earlier, you mentioned it earlier. Can we go over again who's eligible to receive this treatment? Sure. There are guidelines that have been established for what patients should receive these therapies. Number one, the patient has to be over age 12. Number two, the patient has to be positive for COVID. We don't care what type of test was positive for COVID. And then there are certain risk factors that make a patient more at risk for progressing. Uh, patients who are markedly overweight, patients with asthma, patients with heart conditions, patients with diabetes. We know based on the literature and experience over the last year and a half that those patients are at bigger risk for progressing. So there's criteria. And I want, I want to emphasize something as well. Um, patients need to be in the first 10 days of their symptoms. If they seek care after that 10 days, then these antibodies are unfortunately not as effective. Can people who have been vaccinated receive the treatment? Yeah, that's a very small subset of patients, but a really important question. If you've received the COVID vaccine and you turn positive for COVID, you are eligible. That's called a vaccine failure or a breakthrough case. Um, we need to get antibodies into those patients because for whatever reason, the vaccine hasn't worked. Once again, that is a very, very small percentage of patients, but those patients can indeed receive the monoclonals. Okay. And then of course, patients who have not been vaccinated and come down with COVID, if they're within 10 days of onset, um, they can receive the treatment. 
they should. Um, you know, if you if you yeah. gave me a therapy and said this decreases your risk of progressing to hospitalization by seventy percent, yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. Okay, Dr. Anderson, can you walk us through what is involved in the treatment? Is this multiple infusions or just one? Tell us about the process. Sure, great. So right now it's one infusion over half an hour, um, and there's two different ways patients can get the monoclonal antibodies. One is through an IV infusion. Um, that is coming in, getting some paperwork done. That's probably 30 minutes. Um, that's getting the monoclonal over 30 minutes IV. And then we want to watch the patients for any side effects for one hour. So all in, it's about two hours. That's the first route. The second route is if a particular area, and that's not really true in, in Kingman, but if a particular area of the country doesn't have access to people that can start a lot of IVs, then it can actually be given by what's called subcutaneous, like you imagine an insulin injection. Um, so both IV and the subcutaneous take about two hours. Okay. And in Kingman, we are strictly doing IV. Is that correct? That's correct. What side effects have you seen in patients who receive this treatment? They are really, really rare. So we've seen some people that get a little nauseated during the infusion. We just slow it down and most of those patients get better. Like any new medication a patient gets, they could have an allergic reaction to it. If I give you a new antibiotic, right. you could have an allergic reaction. Um, that is almost unheard of. I'd say less than 0.1% of patients have an allergic reaction. We wanna be safe though. We wanna make sure patients are safe. So the reason we have that one hour observation period afterwards is to make sure if that very rare instance of allergic reaction comes up, then we're trained to deal with it and we're going to deal with it. So let's talk about the Delta variant. Is this treatment effective against the Delta variant? It's a great point. Every week, people at the CDC, the FDA, the drug manufacturer check, is the variant still sensitive to this drug? And right now, the drug that we're administering here in Kingman, it's a drug called Regeneron or Regenco, um, still works against the Delta variant. That's terrific news because as we know across the country and here in Kingman as well, um, Delta is the major variant. It also brings me a bit of comfort knowing that we're testing on a regular basis. If any um, variants emerge that it's not sensitive to, then we got to figure out plan we B and C. We can respond to that. Right. That is great news. I understand we have an HHS team that's Health and Human Services of 15 with us supporting the clinic. With this extra help, how many patients can we accommodate in the infusion center every yeah. day? In previous centers that we've been to, we can do upwards of 100 to 150 patients a day. That's with big demand. So the terrific thing about having a team this size, 15, is actually a pretty big team. And as I mentioned before, doctors and nurses from Utah, Colorado, yeah. all over the Midwest, um, they're here to take as many patients on as we can. And how long is that team here with us? So we are scheduled to be here for two weeks. There's a lot of variables that go into any potential extension. So we're here to spread the word, to help patients understand what monoclonals are. And I once again want to compliment the docs and the nurses and the team um, at Kingman Regional Medical Center. They have been doing this therapy, and they plan to continue it after we leave, by the way. Great. Dr. Mike, thank you uh, for joining us again today. We appreciate the information you've given us, and we appreciate the support. Truly an honor. If you think you might be a candidate for monoclonal antibody therapy, please call 928-681-8699. For more information, visit our website at azkrmc.com.